Hi guys, today we're going to talk about how volcanic ash can affect our aircraft engines. Volcanic eruptions can be a catastrophic event for people on land but also a dangerous time for aircraft flying over the affected air zones. When volcanoes erupt, the ashes can reach to a height of up to 101,700 feet. And as we know, aircraft cruising altitudes are from 30,000 feet to 40,000 feet. And an eruption can expel hundreds of millions of ash into the atmosphere. Volcanic ash from a distance can be mistook for harmless grey smoke. But when under a microscope, the combination of heat and cooling ice water turns magma into a powdery mixture of extremely sharp glass-like particles. With structures like these, it's easy to understand the abrasive power of these particles. And when aircraft flies into ashy clouds, the sharp fragments will strike the forward-facing surfaces of aircraft, such as windows and leading edges of aircraft wings. Ash can also penetrate air intakes for the flight instruments such as pitot static system and disrupt the operation of essential flight systems. But the most serious hazard occurs when the ash is ingested by jet engines. The ash rapidly erodes moving engine parts such as compressors or turbine blades. Even worse, ash deposits also build up within the hot sections of the engines and restrict airflow. And the glass fragments of the ash can melt and accumulate as glassy deposits, causing flame out and immediate loss of engine power. When the engine sucks in the tiny pieces of rocks and glass, it passes through the engine's combustion chamber. And the temperature in the combustion chamber is at 1500 degrees and the temperature required to melt the glass is 1000 degrees. Hence, when the ash passes through the engine's combustion chamber, the glass portion melts and sticks to the turbine blade. This can cause engines to stop. There was a case of a volcanic ash affecting a plane back in 24th June 1982. British Airways Flight 9 flew into a cloud of volcanic ash thrown up by a volcano in Indonesia. Shortly after that, engine number 4 began surging and soon flamed out. Less than a minute later, engine 2 surged and flamed out. Within seconds, engine 1 and 3 also flamed out. By now, aircraft had lost all power and began to drop. But without engine thrust, a 747-200 has a gliding ratio of 15 is to 1, meaning it can glide 15 km for every km it drops. The flight crew quickly determined that the aircraft was capable of gliding for 23 minutes and covering 91 nautical miles from its level of 37,000 feet. As the aircraft was gliding, they performed engine restart procedure. Engine number 4 finally started and captain used its power to reduce the rate of descent. Shortly after that, engines number 1 and 2 successfully restarted. We will now show a short demonstration on what happens in the engine when volcanic ash is ingested. This is the dust going into the jet engine. Starts melting and then the glass starts to form in a layer on the turbine blade. Which means the blade is no longer operating efficiently and the engine starts dropping down. As luck would have it, there is a way out of this situation, but it requires nerves of steel. The pilot has to actually shut the engine down, then glide down through cold air. Right, now there's a layer of glass on there. I'll show you what happens now. You shut the engine off and you start putting cold air whistling through it. Look, you can see here, as the cold air is hitting the turbine blade, it's shrinking ever so slightly and it's enough to shatter the... There goes another piece. So the glass is shattering off the blade as we can see it here. 
This has actually happened. In 1982, a British Airways jet lost all four engines flying through volcanic dust over Indonesia. And they found this out by accident. The engines cut out, the thing fell out the sky, gliding down, then suddenly it was able to restart its engines. It's because of this effect. What we have learned from the demonstration is, if an aircraft would enter ashy clouds, turning the engines off enables cool air to pass through the engine. These cause the blades causing the molten glass to crack and disperse, allowing the engines to be restarted again. After this incident, pilot now have procedures to follow with his three vehicles. Six steps are to be followed. Step 1. Reduce thrust to idle immediately. By reducing thrust, engines may suffer less buildup of molten debris on turbine blades and hot sections component. Idle thrust allows engines to continue producing electrical power, bleed air for pressurization and hydraulic power for airplane control. Step 2. Turn the auto throttles off. This prevents the engine from increasing thrust above idle. Ash debris in the engine can result in reduced surge margins and limiting the number of thrust adjustments improves the chances of engine recovery. Step 3. Exit the ash cloud as quickly as possible. A 180 degree turn out of the ash cloud using a descending turn is the quickest exit strategy. Many ash clouds extend for hundreds of miles, so assuming that the encounter will end shortly can be false. Climbing out of the ash could result in increased engine debris buildup as the result of increased temperatures. The increased engine buildup can cause total thrust loss. Step 4. Turn on engine and wing anti-ice devices and all air conditioning packs. These actions improve the engine stall margins by increasing the flow of bleed air. Step 5. If possible, start the auxiliary power unit. The APU can power systems in the event of a multiple engine power loss. Step 6. If volcanic dust fills the flight deck, the crew may need to use oxygen. Use flight deck oxygen at the 100% setting. Manual deployment of the passenger oxygen system is not required because it will deploy automatically if the cabin altitude exceeds 14,000 feet. Alright guys, this is all we have for the volcanic ash effects on airplane engine. Hope you guys understand what we presented. Thank you so much for listening to us.